Now, in this part of our um, explanation and studies, I have now decided to choose one topic from the syllabus. The syllabus, as, as we saw um, from our analysis, has got lots of uh, topics in it, and I'd like to choose a syllabus topic from Unit B and Unit C of the syllabus. Unit B is called Income Tax Liabilities and Unit C is called Corporation Tax Liabilities. And I'd like to choose the topic of, which is called Cap Allowances on Plant and Machinery. And this is from Section 3G and Section 2 as well. So what I want to do is I want to look at, in the, the syllabus, from Unit B and Unit C, I want to look at the definition of what plant and machinery is. I want to show you how to calculate cap allowances for first year allowances and writing down allowances and annual investment allowances. So I've chosen one topic from the syllabus called cap allowances on plant machinery and I'd now like to explain that topic to you simply and briefly. So, looking at the topic of cap allowances on plant and machinery. So, we're talking about businesses, and we know that businesses are run by people who are self-employed, they're known as sole traders, and also they're run by companies. Businesses, whether they're run by companies or individuals, have got to prepare accounts and I'm sure from your earlier studies you are all familiar with how to prepare accounts with debits and credits. When you're preparing accounts you have to choose a, a date that you're going to make up the accounts to and that is called the business's accounting date. Could be the 30th of June or the 31st of December or the 31st of March. Then you, if your business is one of, you know, selling mobile phones, then obviously your sales or your Turnover is going to be what you, the revenue that you get from selling the phones. Those, that's going to be called a credit. And then you're going to have various um, expenditure, which is going to be a debit. Normally, when you prepare accounts, you use something what we in taxation we call accounting principles. And accounting principles will, will involve you putting in various debits. One of the things you've got to be aware of is that capital expenditure is um, called a disallowable expense. So if you buy um, buildings like a shop for your business or if you buy um, equipment, then that's called capital expenditure. And not only from accounting principles, but for tax principles as well, that expenditure is not going to be debited in arriving at the accounting profit. But using accounting principles, what you normally do debit is something called depreciation. And depreciation is calculated using all sorts of different methods like straight line or reducing balance or 20% or 10% and there are different ways to calculate depreciation. In taxation, we don't have depreciation. Depreciation, we say, is a disallowable expense. The, that's the accounting depreciation is a disallowable expense. But we have something called uh, depre taxation depreciation which is allowable, taxation depreciation. And taxation depreciation is also known as capital allowances. So capital allowances are taxation depreciation and calculation is using standard set of rules. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to work out um, capital allowances or depreciation on something that we define as plant and machinery. So I want to talk to you about, first of all, what plant and machinery is. So let's talk about what it is. To illustrate that, I have got um, some pictures of, of plant and machinery that I would like to uh, show you. So plant and machinery is defined as tools of the trade and it's defined as things like uh, computers and, and it's defined as uh, <coughs> vans and lorries and uh, bikes. Bicycle is, is plant and machinery and cars 
and filing cabinets and basically all these pictures here are there to describe what planter machinery is. So we've got some pictures of planter machinery, equipment and vans and cars and uh, cars. One thing about cars that we should uh, be aware of is that cars um, produce pollution and pollution is measured by something called um, the carbon dioxide emission. The more carbon dioxide the car emits, the more pollution it produces and the less pollution it produces, uh, then the lower is the CO2 emission. Cars can be low emission, that means that their carbon dioxide emission is up to 110 grams and they can be medium, which is more than 110, up to 160 grams. And cars that are low or medium emission will be categorised in the something called the general pool. So, planter machinery. We're going to talk about uh, the uh, definition of planter machinery, what it includes, and to illustrate that we've got some pictures here. Some more examples of planter machinery would be uh, planter machinery that is stuck to a building, uh, like lifts are planter machinery, and cold water systems, and central heating systems, and um, air conditioning, and uh, long life assets. Uh, that's an asset with a long life, as you can imagine. Um, like a, I've got a picture there of a cr one of these big cranes, um, is an example of a long life asset. <coughs> and motor cars that are high emission. So, not the building, but the lifts, the, uh, this is the lift uh, and the cold, cold water and the central heating systems, and these things within the building. Now, they're sort of, we, we, I sort of say they're stuck to the building, but the technical word for it is plant machinery, which is an integral part of the building. Not the building itself, but the plant machinery that's stuck to it. So, choosing a topic which is very, very important, and which is very, very frequently examined.